Hello, I'm Michelle Hemphill, host of Our Town, Our Time on RTV32. I have a great show for you today. I have Charles Patterson. He is the commissioner of the Clark County Combined Health District. I also have Captain Don McHone, who is with the Ohio National Guard, Michael Gilbert, who is with Bow Wolf and Wolfman and & Associates, and we'll finish up with David Trimmer from the Western Clark County Business Coalition. So stay tuned to Our Town, Our Time on RTV32. Welcome, I'm joined now by Charles Patterson, who is the Commissioner of the Clark County Combined Health District, and Captain Don McCone with the Ohio National Guard. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Captain, tell me a little bit about the Ohio National Guard and guard care. That's what we're here to talk about today. Absolutely, guard care. Uh, National Guard got involved with guard care in 1997, so wow. we've been doing this. It's a yearly event. It gives the uh, National Guard soldiers an opportunity to interact with the community on a happy note. Right. Because we're just coming in and assist, Not a disaster. assisting the counties and the state mm -hmm. to uh, provide medical screenings. So typical, any kind of vision, hearing, women's exams, we have physicians, nurse practitioners. So we do, uh, I think this year we're offering mammograms. So. Great. And it's all free. It's absolutely free. It's no, any, no restrictions on who can come so in. So there's no income restriction or anything. Anybody can come. Anybody can come. <clears throat> and they're coming to the health department. That's right. They're going to be at the Clark County Combined Health District at 529 East Home Road on July 28th and 29th. And they'll be there from 8 to 5 on Saturday and 8 to 3 on Sunday. Uh, we're really excited that we had the opportunity to partner with the Ohio Army National Guard, the Ohio Department of Health, and the Springfield Regional Medical Center uh, to provide this preventative care here in Springfield. And this is the first time you guys have partnered together to do this, is that correct? In this, for this county, yes. For this county. So it's really exciting for us right. to be able to come in. And right, to do it right here in Clark County. Absolutely. That's great. And like you said, it's preventative screening, it's preventative health care. Absolutely, we got a lot of examinations. We'll also be able to get everybody uh, up to date on their CDC recommended vaccines. Wow. So, so we'll people be providing want to that. bring their kids or I, I also saw you're going to do sports physicals and that type of thing. And the sports physicals a little close to home. I got three yeah. kids who play sports. So right. being able to come in and get some three physicals done. It right. Just a great opportunity. Yeah. So. One stop shop. Absolutely. That's wonderful. And the health department is also going to have people there. And you were mentioning before we started the show that if something comes up with the screening, you'll be able to fit the person with a physician locally? Right. After the tests come back and the recommendations mm -hmm. are made, then we will be working in the community to link those people that have been provided the pr free preventative care right. to physicians and healthcare practitioners here in the community to make sure they get the appropriate follow-up. That's great. So will the, the testing and the screening, and, and you're doing labs and everything, right? Yes. Will they know what's going on right then, or will they have to contact you at a later date? You know, sometimes when you go to the doctor's office and you, you have labs or you have an x-ray or whatever, it takes days to find out. And some of the, like the lab results, obviously there's a, okay. a, a several days turnaround, and that information will be provided to the county. And then they'll That's come right. back the, and contact you. The lab results, uh, the labs are going to be run by Springfield Regional Medical Center. Oh, They're great. donating those services to the wow. community. Very nice. So that's a that's a great community benefit. Well, that we it sure have. is. It's huge. Um, it, but usually it takes a day or two for us to be able to get those results. Any uh, results that are flagged, we will mm -hmm. be contacting those people immediately and making sure we hook them up with the appropriate medical services. Uh, other results will be mailed, uh, so, so they'll have normal them. results will sure. be mailed uh, to each of the clients. There are a few things that will be done right there, uh, for instance, an EKG. Mm -hmm. When the EKG is done, it's going to be done and read right there, and it will be sent with the, the, the tape will be sent with the patient at that time. Wow, you're yeah. really going to do everything. EKGs, dental exams, hearing, vision, yes. Wow, and really you've able. done this in other counties? We really have. It's been very successful in other counties. Um, we just need to have people come and 
come meet us. We're good, right. pe we're good people. So. <laughs> I'm sure. You don't have to be scared. No, no. <laughs> no it's, it's actually Very a great nice. opportunity for folks who haven't had a regular relationship with a physician. Right. People, for some reason, might have lost a job or their health insurance status has changed. Well, They've and been that's huge in Clark County. That is, and they haven't right. been able to get in to get their regular physical mm -hmm. and all their blood work. Um, we'll be doing uh, lipid panels, uh, cholesterol. We'll be doing comprehensive metabolic testing that day. Wow. And so mm -hmm. those, uh, those things are fasting tests. So we need to make sure uh, for the glucose test, the, the metabolic screening, and also uh, the lipid panel that they are fasting at least 12 hours before they come. No food, for no those drink, services. nothing until you get there and get your blood drawn. Water, yes. water, black coffee. Oh, yep. okay. Yep. Just nothing else Just with food, that. No food, no sugar, no kind of additives to the coffee. So. Okay. And um, the health department is going to have people there also working side by side with the people from the guards, right? That is yeah. correct. Uh, we'll be doing some of the ancillary services because okay. guard, the guard's going to provide the, the major the medical screening. The actual medical screenings. Right. Okay. Uh, but in addition to that, we'll be working with the Ohio Department of Health to do HIV, free HIV screenings, oh, and those results are available the same mm -hmm. day. So wow. within 20 minutes, we get uh, it's an oral swab. There's no blood taken, and they can get that. It's a, it's a very quick test. It's mm -hmm. painless. Um, those will be available that day, and they'll also be doing additional screening for sexually transmitted diseases that day as well, free of charge, and our people will be working closely with the Ohio Department of Health on that. Well, mm -hmm. and what a great service you're doing for the community because sometimes it's kind of embarrassing. They may not want to go to their own physician or go somewhere, so they'll let it go. Or they know somebody that works in an office somewhere and they'll let the, let the problem go. This way they can come. It's private. It's, you it'll, know. It'll be 100% confidential. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And there's no income no. requirements. There's no, you don't have to do anything you're you're welcoming everyone right yeah. that's correct hopefully you'll uh while they're getting their exam they'll meet a doctor sitting next to them getting another test done who knows yeah that's so great good. it'll be good times good well i really appreciate you both being here good luck with the project hopefully we can have one yearly here yes. that would be nice mm. and um thank all your sponsors too for us for for providing the service to the community and good luck with it. And I will probably come out and see what's going on that day. Hey, I look forward to seeing you there. And it's you. the 27th and 28th of July. It's the 28th, 28th and 29th. 29th. Oh, sorry. Saturday and Sunday. And Saturday and Sunday. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. When we come back, the show's going to go to the dogs. And right now, we're going to have some better living tips with Randy Jacobs. Hello again, folks. Better Living Tips time on RTV32. Randy Jacobs once again at Cupboard Distributing in Urbana. Once again with the lovely Chris. She's going to help us with our artistic style. Lord knows I need it. Should I pop my collar for this? I think you'll do fine. Okay, we'll do just fine then. Okay, so Chris, what are we working on today? Today we are going to create a snowman face. A snowman face. Now, we usually do that in the winter with some carrot and a couple pieces of coal. Is that not what we're talking about, right? No, not today. We're going to just do some simple strokes and use some paint and brushes. Outstanding. So let's get to it. Show us what we're doing here today. All right. We have three colors of paint, black, kind of a red color. This is for his cheeks and orange, of course, for his nose. Now to create the eyes, a lot of people have trouble with eyes, getting them the right size. And I am going to use the other end of the paintbrush to create the eyes, which is very easy to do. I'm gonna dip into the paint, dot down and pull up. Creates kind of a pear-shaped eye. I wipe my handle of the brush off, and I'm gonna dip again and dot and pull it up. Now, because I wiped it off and reloaded the brush, each time the eyes are identical in size. Just a real simple te technique to uh, make sure that you get the eyes even. To do the nose, because we're working with a carrot and carrots are kind of not even and smooth, mm -hmm. I'm just, I just have a little round brush. I'm gonna start at the base and I'm just pulling these strokes up and getting a little bit smaller as you go up, almost like a cone shape. That easy. I didn't work hard at it. Very simple to do. Now we need some little features on him. We're gonna do a little mouth. And I've just got a permanent marker. This is a fine tip. This one is a little pin, little eyelashes, some eyebrows. All right, 
we need some rosy cheeks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into the red paint, and I've just got a real soft little moppy brush. It's almost like putting makeup on. I don't think you know about that, but... Okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm going to wipe the extra off, and I'm just going to rub it on there and just kind of tap it in until we get a rosy look. Not hard to do. Wouldn't this be great to make ornaments for Grandma, Grandpa, all the aunts and uncles for Christmas? It would be wonderful, and I think the thing that amazes me about it is how easy you make it look. You know, every time that I've tried art, I always try to make it so perfect, and I'm worried about every little line and, and trying to get enough paint in there. You've barely used any paint at all, and you've created real art here. This is fantastic. I think this is literally something that I could do. So I, I, we're going we're gonna to work on this and try to bring the Holzmeyer clan in and see what they think. I always say it's not talent, it's technique. So I think you would not have any trouble at all doing this. Fantastic. And, and of course, here we have some examples of some of the uh, pieces that you do using these types of techniques. Uh, tell me just real quickly, what are, uh, what are these, these items or the, 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 the core of, of what all of these are? Um, this one is a metal. It's like a, a little puffy tin ornament. Great size to work with. That one is a wooden ornament. And you can see that you, it's, even though they look differently, same technique, same face. Can we get a close-up on this? How about that? Oops. Well, these have been Better Living Tips, and we've got some wonderful art coming to you from Cupboard Distributing in Urbana, Ohio. Chris, thank you very much. Randall Jacobs coming to you from RTV32. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Phyllis Springfield Health and Rehabilitation Center. We specialize in short-term rehabilitation and long-term care with everything from physical and occupational therapy to speech and pulmonary rehabilitation. Phyllis Springfield also offers outpatient therapy. We truly believe that we are family serving families. With strong ties to the community, Phyllis Springfield supports organizations that support our friends and neighbors. Phyllis Springfield Health and Rehabilitation Center. It's your choice. Come and experience the difference. Spring is in full bloom. It's time to plan a trip to Capelli's Country Gardens. Open seven days a week with beautiful annuals, hanging baskets, trees, shrubs, seeds, fertilizer, mulch, potting soil, and rose bushes too. You'll find them all at Capelli's. When you want the finest in planting and gardening products, you want Capelli's Country Gardens. Just a short drive from anywhere on Leffel Lane in Springfield. Capelli's Country Gardens. They grow memories. Welcome back to Our Town, Our Time on RTV32. I'm joined now by Michael Gilbert and Beowulf. Correct. Is that the name of the dog? That That's is good. Correct. He's beautiful. Thank you. He and appreciates he, that. He's a service dog, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so he tell is. me a little bit about you train service dogs. Yes. And, you know, sometimes people think service dogs, they just think for the blind, but he does many things. So yeah. tell us a little bit about it. Well, that's a good point. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've encountered a number of people who have told me uh, that, uh, well, this dog is not wearing a harness and you're not blind, so he's not a service dog and you're not, you're not- uh, uh, Able to bring him in. Able to bring him in. Mm -hmm. And so I, I usually try to uh, diplomatically uh, educate the individual to sure. what a service dog is and, mm -hmm. and uh, how many uh, <laughs> various uh, types of service dogs there are because they're not relegated to simply uh, 
uh, the seeing uh, impaired or blind. Mm -hmm. uh, there are hearing, and I'm always looking back and forth, so I'm not being inattentive to you. But no, that's fine. I have to make sure that he doesn't get focused on something that's <laughs> outside of the uh, building there. Uh, he, it's also so very protective, and once he's uh, taken in your scent and the beautiful people that are here working with you and, and your guests, uh, he will put you in that perimeter of protection. Mm -hmm. So someone running up to that window, for instance, uh, he's going to focus on it. He may bark. Sure. So if he does, I'll just calm him back down and we'll right. just move on. Uh, right now, he, he knows that I'm... You have treats. Uh, yeah, he knows I have <laughs> treats, but, but more importantly for him, he knows that I'm occupied, so he's going to uh, work me like a fine fiddle. That's right, that's right. So he's right. going to stare at me. And just gonna, like kids. Yeah, yeah just like kids. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, accommodate yes, him. Yes, you do whatever he needs. So <laughs> he, um, tell me about the, the potty chair and how you oh, great. trained an autistic child. I, yeah, that, that was a, a wonderful experience for me. Actually, I fell in love with the little boy. He was uh -huh. three years old. Of course, I can't say his name and, and, and what have you, but uh, later on, maybe we can do something on that and you can uh, you'll yes. be privy to that. I just have to get permission from his sure. uh, guardians. But um, uh, I, when I got him, I got him from the Hamptons in New York at a, uh -huh. at a, at a kill shelter. And, uh, and I, uh, when I brought him back, started training him, he was just exceptionally uh, an intelligent dog, you know. To begin teaching, with. Teaching, sure. you know, like in two minutes, mm -hmm. different things. Uh, well, on a, on a bet, uh, a gentleman that lives in my apartment uh, said, you know, you really had that dog trained to do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But I said, yeah, you know, I, I bet I could even train him to use the potty. And uh, this was just off of a whim. And he said, well, you know what? If you, if you can do that, uh, I'll treat you to a Wendy's. <laughs> I said, you got to bet. So uh, he gave me two weeks to do it. I said, I don't need that. I only need about two or three days. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, I'm going to give you two weeks anyway. Well, Initially, I was just going to train him to sit on the potty, you know, to win the bet because I wanted that hamburger. Sure. I wanted that free, you know, free meal, Coca-Cola <laughs> and, uh, and a free meal. I'm a bachelor. I, I don't miss a free meal now. <laughs> That's right. And, and I knew I was going to win this bet. And so I started working with him on the on the adult. Uh, I call it potty. Yeah. On the adult potty. And uh, then I said, well, that's a little awkward and a little hard for him. You know, his foot slips in the water and what have you. <laughs> I said, so. Uh, I wonder if he could use a little potty chair. So I, I got a potty chair, a musical potty chair, and I'll, I'll, I'll have him demonstrate sure, for you. Sure, that would be great. Now, keeping in mind that uh, um, generally when it's a new environment mm -hmm. that he's never been in, or any dog, mm -hmm. sometimes they will not react the same way sure. because uh, it, they don't generalize like people do. So, good boy. So uh, I'm going to do a little baby talk from here, here and there, which I tell people never do. <laughs> but I do it, and now I'm going to be all over, you know. <laughs> okay, so they're going to say, well, you did it on TV. Good boy. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. So, Wolf, you ready to use your potty? Come on. Get up. Come on. Wolf, wait a minute. Here. Come. Come. Let's get him around. Come on. Come around. Wait a minute. He does better than I do. Well, <laughs> lift your potty. Lift. Good boy. Play it. Play it. Good boy. Play it. Play it. Oh, he, he said, I'm not, I'm not treating him right. Come on. Yeah. Here you go. Okay, well, play it. Come on. Is that the light? Come on. It come is on. kind of bright in here. Okay, come on. Here, play. Play it. Good boy, good boy. Now turn around, turn around, back up, back up, back up, back, back, back. There you go, <laughs> there you go. Good boy, stay, stay. And then of course he's a refined dog, and you know he's he he has to understand the proper etiquette and That's right. social uh, morals or what have you. Get you, stay. Okay, so uh, so that's what I got him to do, and then all of a sudden I got this brilliant idea. I had a friend that had a uh, was the grandma, grandparent of an autistic boy, mm -hmm. three years old, and uh, he uh, 
go to the party. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a typical trait with autistic uh, children, even up to their teens. Sometimes sure. Sometimes we're not, it's an aversion toward that party for something, for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for some reason, something came in my mind and you said, uh, I believe that this dog can not cure the problem, but can help, help. facilitate. Sure. And uh, she gave me permission to give it a try. And uh, uh, and we went over for our first visit. The first visit was about, first pro uh, hurdle would be to get the little boy to accept because they're close. Right. To get him to accept uh, the dog, which would be easier than accepting me. But he accepted both of us, first the dog, and then I guess the dog told him it was okay to accept me. And leave it for him. And he uh, uh, accepted both of us, and then uh, we uh, started working with him. And after five visits over a period of about three months, uh, he gave us our first deposit in the party. Well, that's great. Well, Michael, I want to thank you and Beowulf for coming. Yeah, we really fast. appreciate it. It does go fast. I'll have yeah. you back again. You can update us on, on your training and how things are going with, oh, with yes. the other dogs you're training. Yes, thank love, you again for being that. here. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. And right cool. now we're going to take a look at the upcoming week's weather. Crossroads Coins is paying immediate cash for old silver dollars, silver coins, and old U.S. money. Cash for anything stamped 10, 14, 18, or 22 karat gold, damaged or not. Top price for any sterling silver items and men's old watches. Also paying cash for 1930s through 60s baseball, football, and basketball cards. Old war souvenirs like helmets, hats, medals, swords, and uniforms. Almost anything military. Call 1-888-416-COIN. Crossroads Coins, 344 East National Road in Vandalia. If you are a scrapbooker, crafter, woodworker, toy maker, or decorative painter, we invite you to discover Cubbert Distributing. You'll find hundreds of creative painting tutorials, craft supplies, and wood products, in addition to a wide range of power tool accessories. We offer classes on painting, card making, and paper crafting. Shop our huge selection and watch for specials online, on Facebook, and in our store. You'll find something new every week. Cupboard Distributing. Come discover the exciting world of art that's waiting for you. Welcome back to Our Town, Our Time on RTV32. I'm joined now by David Trimmer, who has an Edward Jones office in New Carlisle. Yep. And you are one of the founders of the Western Clark County Business Coalition. That's correct. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. So tell us what the Business Coalition is and how it came to be. Uh, good question, because actually it started over a cup of coffee back in 2009 when, uh, if you remember, there were a lot of bailouts and bankruptcies. Yes. And the discussion... Just a few. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no doubt. And unfortunately, there was a lot of conversation of where's my bailout? And uh, there were a bunch of us younger people that said, that doesn't sound American to me. And so we really wanted to focus on the local economy mm -hmm. and get people back to understanding that consumers really drive this economy. Right. And employers are employed because consumers buy. Um, so we started a program called Local First um, out in Western Clark County, Bethel Township to be mm -hmm. exact. And what we realized is, it could be bigger. Um, and so we started what we thought was a revitalization of a chamber of commerce. And what we found is there were all these little communities that weren't talking to each other. Uh, Donaldsville, Medway, right. Park Lane, Northampton, uh, Enon, New Carlisle. And we all had similar challenges uh, from a business standpoint. But all existed by yourself. Yeah, it was almost mm -hmm. like cottage industries all yeah. over again. And so uh, the idea became, what if we became a coalition and worked with one of the three best chambers in the country? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got a seat, sat down with Mike McDormand, and I heard him on one of your previous episodes talking right. about how excited he is about you know, developing the Western Corridor, right. the Eastern Corridor. Well, here we are. We're in the Western Corridor. And what we realized was in small towns, People are very emotional, 
and their conceptions, right or wrong, that, oh, Springfield's just a big town, doesn't care about us, so right. we're not going to care about them. And so one of our challenges is getting rid of those preconceived notions and breaking down those barri barriers and making them recognize there's great resources here. But the thing is, is there's a lack of connect with the small mm -hmm. towns. Right. So we created this business coalition and we got a number of business leaders together and they all think it's a great idea. Mike McDormand is about making Clark County better. Right. And it's not just about the urban center. Of right, or the city limits or whatever. Right. There's great quaintness and congeniality out in the out, outskirts. Um, and so this is going to be a great thing. I mean, I'm very excited about it. Well, I am too. I think it's wonderful. And I think sometimes the people, it's amazing to me, the mindset of a lot of people in the city of Springfield, they think Enon and New Carlisle are, you know, miles and miles away. It's like, no, it's right down the road in the same county. And they offer all kinds of neat and unique shopping and dining experiences. And that's the idea is to get people thinking bigger, to mm -hmm. change the reality. You know, they say, well, I don't, uh, we should have something here. We should be able to sit down and have a nice meal and drink wine. Well, let's develop it. Right. And that's the type of stuff we want to support as the Western Clark County Business Coalition. And I, and I think the county, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of county residents are generational residents in the yes. county. And what better place to keep your money locally than family after family. Most of them are family owned businesses or have been passed down and. It's so true. And really the only thing that's missing is communication. Right. And once that communication is established, then it's collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so initially it was a thought to, to be a separate chamber, mm -hmm. but things, that it was silly to reinvent the wheel. wheel. Right. When you've got this powerful chamber that is growing. It's right here in your backyard. And they want to help. Right. So, I mean, it's almost an IQ test. Yeah. We need to work together. A win-win. Absolutely. So tell everybody a little bit about the importance of buying locally, what it does for the local, for Clark County itself. Well, let me tell you a quick story about the storms, first mm -hmm. and foremost. Uh, New Carlisle was almost just completely uh, jammed in here recently. It was. My son uh, lives there. And what was great about it was no power. Mm -hmm. We had Ledford Electric right in the middle of town, and guess what they sell? generators. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get out of town to get to Home Depot and Lowe's, right. but guess what? There's a small place that actually sold generators and guess what? We were able to cut our way out. Yeah. Um, so there's something great about small towns being able to be self-sustaining. That's right. Um, and I think we should promote that, you know, and so we've got to support each other. Um, because it's what America is built on. I mean, we can talk about these big employers all we want, and they're important. But man, the employment engine of our country are the small businesses. They are. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And good luck with the coalition, Western Clark County, Clark County Western Business Coalition, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, keep me updated. I'd keep like to that. have you guys back on again. And, I'd be um, honored. Let me know, you know, what's going on. Let the community know because it's a wonderful thing you're doing. I'm excited. Good. Thanks again. Right now, we're going to take a look at Dogs and Suds from the Springfield Arts Council.